hey guys, that the behavior of customer changes is not a secret anymore. Digitalization as process optimization a lot do. But digitalization as the transformation on how to react to changed customer behavior, especially in marketing and communication, that's rare. Well, rare. One thing was at last year's DKM, Germany's biggest insurance conference, that was the 6 billion asset sheet mutual life insurer LV871 from Munich, Germany. And now let's see the five learnings how changed customer behavior and customer expectations impact a 150 year old brand and what they're actually doing about it. Hey guys, we are here today with Thomas to learn a little bit more about changed customer behavior and how a 150-year-old insurer tackles that. Do you want to say a few words? Pleasure to have you here, Robin. Um, we are sitting in one of the offices at LV1871. Um, I'm Thomas, I'm heading the Marketing and Corporate Communications Department and I'm looking forward to our discussion today. What are your experiences concerning uh, customer expectation, how it changed over the years, especially in the insurance industry? I mean, just take one example, which is not out of the insurance industry, but that's for me the guiding principle we have got. Um, people are booking their holidays according to the selfie destination. You too? Not me. Is that unbelievable? That's a tremendous change in how you make a decision process. I mean, digitalization has changed our behavior, that's for clear, but that impacts how we make decisions process-wise is completely different. And it's not just a perceived feeling, it's, it's reality. And that's something we take into account when we look at our brand and our activities we are running. So do you think this has a, has a consequence for the insurance customer? Absolutely. I mean. For me, the key of that example is how will an insurance brand in five to ten years or maybe even in a shorter time period be perceived by consumers and uh, what will make the difference. And there I think we've got five key learnings which we derived out of that uh, guiding principle or guiding example if you want to. Number one. Brand differentiation matters. Really convinced that taking into account what we just discussed that the differentiation of the brand will be the key in the future. Today, insurance brands hardly differ and um, the changing consumer behavior, behavior will bring expectations up that uh, force you to differentiate. And our key is to build our new brand which differentiates from uh, competition. And how are you guys doing it? I think the key in the future will be you need to pilot. Every campaign we launch brings us a step ahead. Number two. Second learning for us is um, we are looking at a tremendously extended sales funnel. And I think beside the fact that brands need to differentiate, um, the sales funnel, the changed sales funnel is the key. Um, the classical awareness step we looked at in the past, TV or whatever, um, doesn't exist anymore since years. I think we have learned that 100% uh, in the insurance industry, for sure everyone has got his social, or everyone at the company has its uh, social media initiatives and everything, but the real deep understanding that uh, we are looking at a far extended awareness funnel uh, is not uh, in the DNA of every uh, company. And that's the second thing we, uh, we are trying uh, to really work hard on. Since you're a social media expert, and you have so much learnings uh, of the last decade, actually. What are the, the tips you can give others how to use Twitter and Facebook in 2019? I think the most important thing is to have an idea what content you are um, using for what channel. Yeah. We have a strict strategy. We are using Twitter to reach out to journalists and influencers and experts. And we are using Facebook more for our B2C uh, communication. Inform, informing people with. And do you also produce different content for different channels? Yes, we are more into video um, pictures on Facebook, uh, more into um, blogs and newspaper articles in Twitter, for example. Number three. Learning number three is it's not possible that one social media manager or even 10 or more social media managers provide relevant content on a day-to-day -day basis and on a trustworthy basis. So what we launched last year is a corporate influencer program 
we embedded our social media strategy in the DNA of the whole company and from every department we recruited um, corporate influencers as we called them or social media managers. Corporate influence is far more than just bringing the brand to life but it's the most trustworthy element you can get if your employees are your uh, brand ambassadors or corporate influencers. We have some concrete examples where you think about that went really well with corporate influencers on all levels in all departments. I mean just look at our uh, CSO Hermann Schrögenauer. We really activated him on uh, LinkedIn for example but also so on, uh, on Facebook, where he shares from a business perspective to a very personal perspective uh, everything we are doing here. And that goes uh, down through all levels of hierarchy in the company. From IT, uh, HR, marketing, product development, everyone is involved. So you need to sign off a lot of content then? No, and I think that's the real difference. Um, we don't sign off any content. We offer tra trainings to the people up front. Uh, they can choose their channel, what the basis of that strategy is, and then the people have got the complete freedom. So how can one um, help the change also internally? Do you have some concrete examples how you guys are doing it? Well, we changed our style of communication. We established an internal wiki, so um, everybody is allowed to, to write in this wiki entrances like uh, what's going on, what's on my mind, what projects they are doing, and everybody can uh, read them, comment them, like them. Like everybody, like from the trainee to the intern to the CEO? Everybody. Like everybody. Everybody like everybody. Everybody like everybody. Number four. Number four was speed before planning. And perfection. And perfection. Yeah. That's absolutely true. I mean, we are working with agile methods since five, six, seven, eight years, even longer, long before my time. But I think the element uh, which I added is speed before perfection and before planning. For sure, we have got a high level plan, but that's it. Seriously, we nail on our plan at the beginning of the year. High level, everyone in the team uh, gets his or her own budget uh, for, for the topics they are responsible for and then they have got the absolute freedom um, to roll out their plans and to react on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm, design thinking process, we make interviews, many interviews with uh, our customers and with the brokers and therefore we can make the product. A lot of uh, prototyping, testing with a uh, shorter term um, development um, time frame. So this is something new um, we are working on. And what happens if a test uh, is negative and something fails? It doesn't matter. We try and again and again. So uh, we will learn um, on every uh, prototype. How did it go when you wanted to start this here? How was the process and um, how do we have to imagine that? Well, it was quite easy, I have to say, because there was a lot of interest in this topic, but people just didn't know how to start. And I just said, well, let's just do it <laughs> and get started with um, the tracking. Why did you guys actually do a total relaunch of your website? Well, the original plan was just to, to achieve a better visibility online, because if people don't find you, you just don't exist. <laughs> mm. um, That's what I always say, too, by the way. But then uh, we discovered that our old website was just not, it was just not possible to optimize it in a way that would make sense. So we decided to do a total relaunch, set up everything new, build a whole new structure, new content and everything. And so we, we achieved a visibility plus of 200%. And how was the decision process? The decision process was a bit like the analytics decision process. We told our boss, hey, no one finds us online, so what can we do? And search engine optimization is a very sustainable process, much better than advertisement to, to be visible on Google. Number five. I think the... Uh biggest challenge or hurdle, however you want to call it, is to convince um, the organization itself in a change management, if you want to say so, that the investment into the brand to create a digital brand is so important. What I think is important, uh, you don't only have customer behavior changing, but customer expectation changing, exactly. what, you, what you said in the beginning, yeah. and the attention of the customer somewhere else, not like it was 5, 10, 15 years ago. And you need, when you want to sell a person something, you need to have the attention of the person. Um, you know, there where the attention is, your competitor will be. 
That's it. Exactly. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks, Robbie. Bye. Bye. <laughs> you watched the whole video? That's great. Even greater it would be if you would hit the subscribe button down there and stay up to date all the time and get our information right away.